wow it has been so long since the last video and i'm so sorry about that but i have been very busy working on uh, another roblox game with my brother that we've you know still been working on and i think that i put a lot of time and effort to the point where we are to we are at the point where we can start making abilities for our races now these abilities can be anything we want it to be but i, I want them to be you know pretty special and i want them to be advanced not just something cheap so what i had in mind was having an ability that can track a player's movement so we can see that this player right here is moving now imagine you just have a fireball that shoots right where you're pointing at but he moves out of the way well he's not going to get damaged and i don't like that unless you have some radius circle that you know has an explosion range and in if you're in that area you're going to get damaged now i could do that and i can do that and i have done that I don't like that though. I want the move to be going to that person. It just makes it feel that much harder and that much more, you know, PvP uh, aspect-ish. So right now I have fireballs and I think I have about three or four that shoots out at a bezier curve that comes outwards and then back into the point where your mouse is pointing. So we'll see that when I do a uh, point right here at the base plate, you'll see that those three have a, a bit of a bezier curve, it comes out and then reaches back in. Okay, now that was just pointing at a distance that I can shoot at, but now imagine I'm shooting too far away, say way down there. Well, it's not going to go all the way down there. Instead, it's just going to go to the max distance I have set, which is 80. That's perfectly fine. So we're at 80. So now you saw that I was pointing at the base plate way down there, but I can't get there. Okay, now imagine you're not pointing at a target anymore. It's not a base plate. It's not a model. It's not a part. It's not a humanoid. It's nothing. It's just the air. Well, I also had that. And it'll just go all the way to your max distance and to where your mouse is pointing perfectly, which is amazing. I mean, wow, I just could not find anything on the internet to help me do this. It's just amazing. So I had to go ahead and figure this out myself. And I think that I did a really good job at simplifying it down to what I need and what I just want. So we can hop right back into that. And, and just another showcase real quick. We can see that if I it at the model it damages them perfectly smoothly so nice and then we'll see this model when he moves we're going to shoot it and you're going to see that it tracks him okay it didn't seem like it tracked him that well just because you know but we'll, <laughs> we'll try again wow i missed okay obviously you have to have your mouse on the target which is a bit hard sometimes wow i'm terrible There we go, and it tracks in. Boom. Perfectly done. Smooth and everything. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and show you the guys the code because I think that everybody should know this. I mean, I don't really see that many people do it in games, and I think it's just something great to, to know in general. So let's, let's get to that. Alright, so right up here, first of all, you can see that we have the client, the server, and the module now the module in here is just going to be things that we want so we can change the hotkey from x to three if i wanted to i can change the fireball speed from 40 to 100 if i wanted it faster i can make the, the damage uh, from the explosion even bigger although i don't use the explosion i can make the explosion range even bigger i can make the max fireball range from 80 which is what we had before and i can make it bigger smaller whatever i'd like uh the amount of offset they have for when they spawn and then the amount that spawns so I could set it from a minimum of three random and I have a random number that picks between three and whatever I pick or or one if I change this to one and another number and I can spawn that many or a random number between those numbers that many fireballs uh, I just wanted three keep it simple you don't need a crazy amount and then this one is just the delay between making the fireball from its min to its max and then the cooldown of course is just 2.5 you can make it whatever you'd like originally it was five i just put it to 2.5 to make it easier so that's all you're going to see from the configuration module so let's just close that out real quick so we're starting off with the uh local script because obviously how are you gonna um send an input to know that you're firing a fireball well Let's just go through this. I have everything marked down so that way we can do it step by step with you guys. All right, so obviously we got to wait five. That's just me because I don't like to do the wait for a child's humanoid or the character and stuff like that. So I just wait a couple seconds for the character to spawn in and then we find the uh, player and all that. So we get the player from the local player. We get the replicated storage and then we go down. Well, this is our remote event. Now, our remote event, I just called RE and you can get it from the 
uh, replicated storage, and then a remote event, which is it's just called remote event. Then we get our server variables, which is going to be your configuration module right here, and then it's going to be your context action service, and then you're going to have your get mouse and your camera from the player. All right, and then we are also going to get the player variables, which you're going to get your character right here, your humanoid, and then you're going to get your humanoid root part. From there, we get our misc variables. This one is just going to be the client debounds because you can't. We don't want you to spam a move, right? That would just be kind of broken. Right here, we're going to see a function called raycast. Uh, that's just going to return uh, what it's found or where uh, its its endpoint ends up when we call the function for a raycast. But right down here, you're going to see that we have a handle input. This is where we're going to get our um, input from. And down here, you'll see that we bind the action of fireball to handle input. Uh, and then set to true and then config hotkey and that hotkey is obviously uh, right in here hotkey is equal to x right so now it knows that x is for uh, handle input so whenever we press x you're gonna fire this all right cool and then it also fires fireball so if we get if action name is not equal to fireball or input state isn't at its end or the client debounce isn't false yet, then we're not going to do anything further. However, if we do have fireball and our input cert, uh, state isn't at the end or is at the end, it's, we haven't done anything with it, and the client debounce is false, then we're going to continue on. From there, we get the input object key code, which is just going to be uh, from the config, which is X, which is what we have it. We're going to call our debounce to true. That way we can't press it again. And then this is where we start setting up our ray, uh, our ca uh, ray cast variables. So we're going to call max distance is going to equal to our config dot max uh, fireball range, which you're going to see right over here. Max fireball range is 80. So we made the max distance equal to that. Ignore list is going to be your character because you obviously don't want it to hit your character. Uh, you can put anything else you want in here if you have like a squad system or something like that. Uh, and then you're going to have your unit ray is going to equal from your camera screen point to ray uh, your mouse.x and your mouse.y we're able to get that because we got the mouse from your player up here so we know the mouse.x and the mouse.y and we can call it our unit ray and then we create the origin from the origin and then the direction with direction and then we create an instance hit point is equal to our raycast function and we pass in the origin the direction the max distance it can go to and the ignore list and then from there it's going to return whatever it finds or whatever it gets right here so if it finds a humanoid or or it doesn't find anything it's going to give us a point and or target and then right down here we're going to see that we fire server so that we can start using the ability we fire the remote event and we give it mouse.hit which is the, the 3d world space the mouse.target which is what it's looking at or on and then hit point which is from the uh, raycast return and then as that's all being fired we then wait uh, dirt for the cooldown which is just 2.5 and then we turn the client debounce back to false which means we can then use this again all right so now that we're finished looking at this we're going to go to fire uh, fireball server because we just fired this to the server so we're going to look at that all right so the first thing you're going to notice is that we have a function up here we're not going to look at this function just yet because that doesn't have anything to do but let's look at it over here we got our game variables which is our replicated storage remote event as always and then our config for our module and then we have misc variables of goal distance and bool humanoid all right so we're going to go all the way down to our remote event so right here you can see that we passed in the player the mouse hit the target and the hit point that we returned from the raycast all right so we're going to call our, our player, uh, our character, we get from the player.character, and then we see if character and character.humanoid.health is greater than zero, so he's not dead, we can use this move. So we call start is equal to position. So that's going to be where our move starts from us, from our humanoid root position. And then we're going to see if target, which means if there is a target, if there is an object, if there isn't, then this doesn't work. But if there is an object, then we're going to say if the target uh, finds a humanoid root part. So if the target.parent finds a humanoid root part, because when we look at a model, uh, you'll you'll get the target, and the target is most likely going to be a part. So the head, the arm, the right hand, the left hand, the leg, the torso. And if you do dot parent, that brings you to the character. And then you can take that and say find first child humanoid root part, as everybody has a humanoid root part. If it does, 
then we're going to be able to take our goal and equal it to the target the parent humanoid group part and then we're going to find the distance between the start and our goal dot position now we say goal dot position here because we didn't specify position up here i want to make this uh, clear because this is a humanoid and then the else is going to go over anything that isn't a humanoid which we don't want or you know anything that isn't a humanoid we won't have this it, it'll be different the goal is going to be different so this is you're going to get your position and then you do dot magnitude that way you can get a number instead of a vector three and then you say okay if the distance or magnitude is greater than the config dot max fireball range and we know that the max fireball range is 80 and it and it is greater then goal is going to be equal to hit point which is the remember the ray cast that we sent and if it doesn't find anything it'll just do uh, it'll make its length 80 and then wherever that endpoint ends is going to give us our coordinates for our XYZ after that we say we set a bool humanoid to true because guess what we did find a humanoid so we should make the make sure that we know it's it's a humanoid if it isn't if it isn't a humanoid if target isn't a humanoid then we're gonna set goal to our mouse hit dot position and then we're gonna find the distance just like last time dot magnitude and then if the distance or magnitude is greater than the fireball range goal is equal to hit point just like we said before your ray cast um, from the local if it doesn't find anything or it just ends up all the way to 80 it'll give us that coordinate that way we know uh, that we were too far uh, from our max range and then we're gonna set bool to false now that's if we end up with a target that isn't humanoid and then the true is set if we do end up with a humanoid now if the target is just air because remember we said if target else if it's not anything if it's just straight air then we're gonna do the same thing just set goal equal to mouse hit dot position which is the 3d world space vector and then you're gonna take the magnitude of uh, or slash distance is gonna be start minus goal dot magnitude and then magnitude or distance is greater than config which it could be or could not be if it is then the goal is gonna be equal to hit point because it's too far out of our range if it isn't no problems set the bull humanoid to false because we are not a bull uh, we are not a humanoid all right now that we finished with that we can go all the way right here and we're going to start making our fireballs now this is just randomizing uh the amount of fireballs that we have so i have mine set to three and three so no matter what i'm always going to get three fireballs but i could make uh the minimum and the maximum different numbers and make it so i could have like one and seven and then I would be able to get a random number between one and seven and between that random number, I get that many fireballs made. Now, I think it's just too much to have more than three and, it's, and because I have the Bezier curve, which we can get rid of if we would like to make it just one, you do the Bezier curve so you can see multiple fireballs come out at the same time, which is what we're doing, which is why it works so nicely. So I think really I just need three. And then we take uh, a for loop and we say i is equal to one, uh, compared to the number of fireballs that we have which is you know whatever that random number was and we use a task.spawn now the cool thing about a task.spawn is that it will take multiple function requests without waiting for another one to finish so it allows us to do multiple things at the same time practically so we're gonna do create a hitbox hitbox instance and we created a part and then we say oh well, remember that that bull humanoid that we had up there if it's true then we're going to fire ability of start goal and character remember now goal is always going to be different between if it's a humanoid and if it's not a humanoid goal here represents a humanoid root part of the target and goal down here represents a vector three right here you can see it vector three and this one represents a humanoid uh, root part you can't really see it because it expects a vector three but yeah so we pass in a humanoid root part there and then we say uh, right here, which is what we're going to need to see, but we can we can look at that right afterwards. We say distance is equal to the start minus goal dot position. Now we say dot position because remember, uh, goal is equal to goal right up here. Goal is equal to target dot parent find first child humanoid root part, but we didn't specify the position of the humanoid root part. 
So we have to say it ourselves. So we say dot position here. And then we get the magnitude to make it a number. And then we say the travel time is equal to the distance that we just made divided by the config.fireball speed, which we have in here, which is 40. We can make it whatever we like, but divided by uh, that speed. All right, and then we wait that travel time because by the time this is done, your fireball should have already made it to your target. And then once that's finished, you're going to create a, you're gonna, you're gonna set your properties. So your shape is gonna be a cylinder, which is what we just created. It could be a box or anything you'd like. And then we did anchor it as true so it doesn't fall through the world. Can collide as false so it doesn't glitch out the players. Transparency is zero so you don't see it. The, the orientation is over by 90. That way we can uh, correctly use the XYZ without having to make it, you know, negative X, Ys, and Zs. And then we make the size equal to our explosion range which we have in here, which is just 10. So it's gonna be a 10 by 10 by 10. So we, we make the size and then we set the parent equal to the workspace and then the position equal to the goal that position. All right, now that we fired the ability, we're gonna go into our function up here and we see that we have start goal and character. Now, again, we use a task uh, spawn function that way we can uh, get multiple of those fireballs through uh, simultaneously practically and then we have that bull humanoid again saying if it's true which means we do have a humanoid we're looking at your character shooting which is going to be equal to your character because you're the one firing the ball p0 is going to be equal to your start position p2 is going to be equal to your goal so right now we have uh, p2 is equal to a humanoid root part and then we make the distance equal to p0 or your start minus your humanoid root root part dot position because remember we have to specify that dot magnitude to get the distance and then travel time is equal to distance divided by fireball speed again and then we set these randomizations now these randomizations uh are just going to be for where we want the randomized curve to be or like how big we want the curve to be from the x y and z position now you can see that i changed it a bit here for the y because i don't want i don't want the um the y to go below the surface so I just made it 0.5 or 1 and then made this halfway in between just like the rest all right and then once that's all randomized and you get your x y and z we're gonna take p1 is equal to your remember p0 is your start so we're gonna take uh, p1 is gonna be equal to your start lerp and then take p uh, your your goal position and place your p1 halfway between p2 and p0 okay and now what this does is this sets where our, our uh, curve like the peak of our curve is going to be so that's how we get our bezier curve all right and then we we start creating the uh we take the fireball from our our replicated storage we set the can collide to false because we don't want it to collide with anything we set the true so it doesn't fall through the world as we're using it and then the parent to the workspace all right and then we're gonna create increments. And the increments are important, very important, because you're gonna have the travel time divided by the amount of time the server for a tick. And what that's gonna do is we're gonna use a for loop. And between each time it loops, it's going to increment until it find, it's gonna do one, and then it's gonna be two, and then three, and so on, until it finally reaches our increment, uh, which is equal to travel time divided by our tick. And then we do uh, these, these guys, which is just to get your, uh, your curved position and then once you finally make it to the curve uh, you set your position to the curved position and then you just continue uh, continuously do this until you finally reach your end goal and your end goal is supposed to be p2 dot position right here so this is your end goal now if you don't want your bezier curve and you want a simplified version where it goes straight to the target then you're just going to use uh, local position is equal to uh, p0 which is your your start lerp to p2 and p2 is your end goal dot position i divided by increments and then do new fireball dot position is equal to position and that'll just slowly increment um your fireball to the uh player so this is this is very important this right here is what's helping us update our position every like every few ticks like every tick it's updating its position so it, it's always updating the the target's position too so it's always going to find that target no matter what and then at the end once it reaches its, its final increment you're going to destroy the fireball now remember we had up here that it was true 
Well, if it's not true, then we're going to do the same thing, except your goal isn't a humanoid anymore. It's a vector, because remember, we don't have anything. So distance, we d and we do the exact same thing. The only thing that's changed is your P2 isn't a humanoid anymore. It's a vector, so you don't have to keep saying uh, dot position. See right here, we just say P2, because it's already a vector. And then we go through, do everything like we always do, and it's the exact same thing. The only thing that changed was the fact that it's not a, a humanoid anymore, it's a uh, position in the world space. And you do the exact same thing. All right, so now that we went through that, we know what the uh, f uh, fire ability does. So now we can go to the else statement. And remember, up here we are at the uh, if bool is equal to true, and then we did all that. Well, if it's not true, then we're just going to create fire ability start, and then goal is equal to our vector position, and then we send it for that else statement in there. And we do the same thing. Create our distance, our travel time, our task.wait, and then the hitbox. All right, once that's finished, we're just going to call connection uh, equal to hitbox.touched and then get parts is equal to hitbox get touching parts. Now parts, now it's going to have everything that's touching the hitbox. And then we're going to disconnect our connection and then destroy the hitbox immediately. So we did all this in just a few like milliseconds. So this all happened in a few milliseconds, this right here. And then we create our uh, damaged characters and say for I in parts. Uh, for I part in pairs parts do uh, and what that does is it, it uh, goes through everything inside of parts so every part we say if part right here dot parent just like we did with the target has a humanoid and it's not a part of the damaged characters table uh, part dot parent then we're gonna set it equal to true and then damage that player that way we know that they have already been damaged and they won't be damaged again if it finds them and we damage them and that's it that's quite literally it the only the most important thing from that whole thing that we needed to have was this right here if i can find it this right here the increment in the for loop because this allows us to track the enemy and I think it was a pretty, it's a pretty short script. Uh, it's just a lot of if else statements based off of whether it's a character or uh, air or a part that doesn't have a humanoid. But in the end, you'll end up with something like this. Where this person is moving, and you shoot it and it'll find them and damage them. And then you can have it in the air and it'll just go straight to that point up to 80 uh 80 because that's where we have our max range to be it can hurt somebody standing still no problem it can go to this part right here and disappear and and that's it and then we can make it go to the floor there or we can make it follow this person and damage them so there you go guys i thought i would really share this with you guys because i just it took so long to figure this out without any help i mean seriously so in the end guys thank you for watching this if you did stay this long and please share this because i'm sure that the more games that use this will just just make roblox so much better i mean just imagine if we can make roblox games so much better that would just be a, a dream come true honestly just like how games never stay the same over the years they're always going to change and become better and better that's what i want roblox platform to be i want it to get even better than it is now so yeah i, ho I hope you guys enjoyed this little lesson and i hope you guys enjoyed the the fireballs and the tracking and yeah uh don't be afraid to check out our um discord channel for the unknown phoenix official page or that's our uh roblox studio group and then um also our uh, game which is called echoes of tenebratia uh, what you can find inside the group so yeah th uh, thank you guys for joining and um i hope you share this with your friends and everybody else who's a creator thank you